It's time for Dolan's Diary, my look back at the week's big stories. Parting is such sweet sorrow. The smiling tyrant, the grinning dictator, the laughing autocrat, Jacinda Ardern, the super woke New Zealand premier is no more. In a statement as fake as that platinum grin of hers, she said that she doesn't have the energy to be prime minister anymore, that there isn't enough in the tank. Well, what she's actually lost is not energy, of course. Politicians don't retire. She's lost public support. She was going to lose the next election. Why? Because she turned her once great and, of course, beautiful country, New Zealand, into a hellish police state in which neighbours were told not to talk to each other and the unvaccinated were told that they would be hunted down. She became the flag bearer for China's zero COVID approach and reflects, in my view, everything that was wrong with the global pandemic response. She would argue that her policies saved lives. And given the gushing tributes, it's clear she's a popular and admired figure for many around the world, offering a different way of doing politics. But I'll take the old way of doing politics, if you don't mind, given that this new style of politician was linked to the World Economic Forum's globalist agenda. In office, she enthusiastically partnered with China on trade, leaving her ethics at the door. She was a politician who smiled when she happily confirmed that unvaccinated people would be treated as second class citizens. And she told the public to stop reading any information about the pandemic that didn't come straight from the government. She famously said that her government was the only source of truth. Words that could comfortably reside in George Orwell's dystopian classic 1984. Jacinda Ardern, the Kiwi Mussolini is no more. Good riddance. Now, Rishi Sunak is in hot water after failing to wear a seatbelt whilst recording an Instagram video in the back of his Jag. To grow the economy. And today we're announcing the second round of allocations from our levelling up fund. And that's about investing in local areas in order to create jobs and help deliver on that promise to boost growth. OK, he made a mistake. It's much safer to wear a seatbelt. But is this how trivial politics has now become, with one paper laughably comparing this story to Partygate? They say you get the politicians you deserve. Well, you get the journalists you deserve as well. And it's my view that so many of the scribblers in Fleet Street and powerful media figures on TV, on the radio and online couldn't give one hoot about the real lives of their audience. It's all just a game to them. But for the millions struggling with the cost of living and trying to access public services that don't work, it's anything but a game. But hey, keep talking about Rishi Sunak and his trip in a car. Sometimes I just wish the establishment media would belt up. A mother has gone viral online by sharing a photograph of a pathetic school lunch given to her child devoid of nutrition. Feeding children correctly is the best investment we could make. Good, healthy food and enough proper protein will produce a generation of strong, energetic and productive people. A couple of years ago, I reported on a story in which a primary school teacher was reduced to tears when they opened one child's lunchbox provided by their parents. What was in that lunchbox? A Kit Kat and a can of Red Bull. Borderline criminal. But these school dinners don't look much better. What children learn in the classroom is essential, but what they eat in the lunch hall is just as important. Counter-terrorism staff at the Home Office have been given lessons on neo-pronouns used by non-binary people. Civil servants were told to use uh, so-called non-binary pronouns like they and them, and so-called neo-pronouns like Z or A. In its push to gender neutralize the workplace, the presentation at the Home Office even said that referring to colleagues as mate 
is not acceptable since this is a male gendered term. One slide showed an employee apologizing for using the term mate to refer to someone that's a they them colleague before saying thank you for correcting me. Welcome to hell. Be clear, this is our Department for Homeland Security. Now, it's fair to say that trans people suffer appalling prejudice and abuse, and the Home Office are clearly trying to make them feel included. Many would argue it's simply respectful to acknowledge people's pronouns and the gender by which they identify. But if this is what is happening at the Home Office, do you feel safe in their hands? Will you be checking a terrorist's pronouns? Next time they approach you with a machete, the West has fallen, folks. Sometimes I think we deserve obliteration. Having been the darling of America's woke media elite, the halo has slipped for Prince Harry, as lefty liberal comedians like Jimmy Kimmel now openly mock the prince for his navel-gazing exploits. When people just resort to laughing at you and doing gags about you, you know the game is up. After all, the pun is mightier than the sword. Prince Charles is to give up his traditional silk breeches, those famous silk tights and velvet gowns that would normally be worn on a coronation. Instead, for his big day, he will wear his military apparel. What a terrible waste. Not only is our new monarch one of the most elegant public figures out there, King Charles has a king excellent pair of legs. And now we won't see them. More's the pity. And that was my diary of the week.